I had been wanting to create the ultimate cider donut recipe for BA for a while, and this, I think, is it. It's packed full of apple flavor, and I'm gonna show you how to make it. So, let's go boil some cider. Because, one thing I, didn't, I did not understand about cider donuts, because I looked at a lot of recipes when I was researching this, and there wasn't a lot of cider in it, and a lot of the recipes just didn't seem like they had a lot of apple flavor. And so what I really tried to do with this recipe is really concentrate a lot of apple flavor into the recipe. So I'm gonna start out with three cups of apple cider. You wanna put this in a large skillet along with two cinnamon sticks. And we're just gonna bring this to a boil. And we're gonna reduce this down into a syrup. We're gonna really, really concentrate the flavors. It's almost gonna become uh, like, like a really thick, syrupy, honey, jammy situation. We can't possibly add this much liquid into the batter or else it would actually be more like a cake than a donut. So by concentrating it, by getting rid of all of this, uh, um, all of the, the water and the moisture that's in the apple cider, we're just gonna concentrate all of the sweetness. We're gonna caramelize some of the sugar. Um, we're adding the cinnamon sticks to really bring out those like warm fall spices that I love. And um, it's just gonna make a really great donut. I think probably the easiest way to shop for apple cider, I mean, you know, like you can, you can go into the, the juice section of your grocery store and you'll see the, uh, you know, apple juice and uh, like all of the clear apple beverages. Um, if it's clear, then that means it's been processed and all of the flavor um, has been taken out of it. Uh, what you wanna do is shop for apple cider that's refrigerated. If it's refrigerated, that means it's perishable and it probably looks like this, kind of cloudy, but that just means that there's a lot of uh, apple flavor in there. And it also probably means that it was fairly recently pressed. Um, so they're just taking all the apples and they're like, you know, pressing them down. They're extracting all of that juices. And all of this, all of the stuff that's making it cloudy is gonna add more flavor. Uh, and that's what you really want. So this is gonna take about 30 minutes to reduce, but we have a swap. Well, good, so we don't need to like swap the pan now, right? Because oh, we already... Let's move to this one. <laughs> yeah, great. So, okay, so what's gonna end up happening is, you know, as the uh, the apple cider reduces, it's going to get like you know some sh schmoozy stuff around the uh, the edges of the pan, um, but it's going to get into this like very thick jelly like substance. It's really really super delicious. Actually, if you made this and like put this on pancakes or French toast or swirled it into some soft butter and put it on a biscuit or a muffin, it's amazing. Um, this is basically like a form of um, apple butter. Uh, which we are actually going to use in this donut as well because I needed even more apple flavor. So, might as well just take this over and... All right, so we're just gonna get rid of the cinnamon sticks. They've released all their flavor. I wish you could smell this because it's like, it's got a really, really strong cinnamon and apple flavor. It's super delicious. It's really hard to get apple flavor in baked goods. Like if you've ever had, you know, applesauce cake or muffins, um, it's a lot of times, you know, you compensate uh, for the lack of apple flavor with a lot of the, the spices. So they tend to be very spice forward. Um, and if you take it away, it just reads as a really moist cake. You don't really perceive a lot of the apple flavor. And so now we are going to whisk all the dry together. I hear Brad. Brad, I just saw your cup. Yes, making donuts. Yeah. What kind of donuts you making, bud? Cider donuts. What's that, red bean taste? I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> red bean donuts. Ooh. Um, no, that's uh, apple butter and reduced apple cider. Yum. Yeah, yeah. You gonna be around for a bit? Uh, what's a bit? Uh, like half an hour? Negative. All right. <laughs> Friday afternoon, but I'm cutting it late as it is. I know, you know, yeah. I'm surprised you're still here. I'm glad you're making donuts, Rick. If there was anyone I'd want to make a donut, it'd be Sugar Man Martinez. Yeah. Well, I'm sad you're not going to be here. So is this old fashioned? Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. old fashioned. Yeah, yeah. Cake donut. Yeah. Oh, All right. I, I love cake donuts. When they're good and they're fresh, they're the best. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? It's one of those, I, if I had a pick, I love a yeasted donut. Um, but like when a cake is optimal, it, it, it's, it's something yeah. special. It's really awesome. We'll carry on the good work, Rick. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> All right.
So that's mixed. Uh, what am I doing now? All right, now I'm gonna mix all the wet ingredients. So I've got the reduced cider. This is the apple butter. It's so good. If you've never had apple butter, you should definitely try it. If you like applesauce, this is like applesauce on steroids. Got some vanilla. All right. And you just want to combine this. Um, the, uh, the reduced cider is like pretty thick and syrupy, so you just want to make sure that you get it in there, get everything combined before it goes into the stand mixer. And when it cools off, it's going to have like little clumps, and that's totally fine. Those are actually just going to melt into the batter. All right, now we're ready for the stand mixer. So we are going to we are going to beat up our butter. <laughs> I love Brad's laugh. Uh, this is brown sugar and granulated sugar. And so we're going to basically treat this as if we were making a cake. This is a cake donut. So let's just start on low just to get everything incorporated. And so like with any good cake, you want to incorporate some air into the butter. You want to combine the, the butter and the sugar. It'll start to melt a little bit. I'm using brown sugar because I like the flavor. It also helps with the moisture level. Um, for cake donuts in particular, the reason why cake donuts are so good when you get them at a good bakery is because they have an extruder that they can actually create a very wet dough and then just drop it down into the hot fat. When you're making them at home, it's harder because obviously most people don't have that. And what makes a good cake donut is a really, really wet uh, batter. And so anytime that you can add more moisture, so in this case, we're using the two forms of apple, we're using the, uh, the, the brown sugar, which also has a lot more moisture. That just helps with the, the texture and also the flavor. All right, I'm going to add the eggs one at a time going to look a little bit broken and then it's going to come back together. Actually, I'm going to scrape the sides. This is really important when you're baking um, cookies or cake or donuts. You want to scrape the sides of the bowl. Make sure that all the butter gets incorporated. You can see that it's coming back together now. I'm gonna add the second egg. So this looks pretty good. I'm gonna turn it off and then I'm gonna add the dry and the wet in three editions. So we're gonna do about a third of this. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. All right. And then I like to pulse whenever I'm using a stand mixer. Uh, when I add the dry, just kind of pulse it like that, just to make sure that no flour comes and flies out at you. Rick, it's two additions. All right. I'm gonna add the liquid. And then, when that looks like it's almost completely incorporated, I'll add the dry again. All right, we'll just go ahead and put all of the flour in there now. All right. All right, and then the last of the wet. It's mixed. Great. All right, so now we're going to transfer this to a parchment lined baking sheet. Um, you can see it's like super, super wet, and that's exactly what you want. Now, the trick is whenever you're making a wet donut batter like this, you 
absolutely. Shit, I hate this. Should we get some butter? <laughs> <laughs> we want to lube up our mixer. <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Just make sure that everything is completely incorporated in here and there are no streaks of butter or sugar at the bottom. So the thing that you want to do, because this dough is so wet, you want to use a lot of flour on this parchment paper. So I usually put about a third of a cup down. Just sprinkle it down. It's going to want to stick. If you, if you don't put this amount of flour in, I know it seems like an obscene amount of flour, but this is a very wet dough. All right. And then just turn it out. Make sure you get all this delicious apple-y goodness. Ah, yum, so good. All right. And now we're gonna pat this out. We're gonna need a little bit more flour to make sure that the dough doesn't stick to our hands. And then just pat it down. You wanna go about three quarters of an inch thick. And it's gonna, um, when it fries, it's gonna puff up. So make sure that you get it pretty close to three quarters of an inch. If, if you're gonna err, err on the side of making it a little bit thinner. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this rest. Um, it's gonna be a lot easier to cut and fry if it's chilled. The other thing that's gonna happen is the flavors are gonna come together and a really nice rest time of about three hours or up to overnight in the refrigerator is gonna allow the flour to hydrate. Um, and what that's gonna do, it's just gonna hold onto that moisture. If you dropped in this into hot oil right now, um, they basically just steam out. And so the donuts would seem a little bit dry and crumbly. Giving it a nice rest time of three hours to overnight is gonna just keep all of that moisture in there. It's gonna give you some really beautiful craggy edges that are gonna hold onto a lot of that cinnamon sugar. So we're gonna wrap this up and put it in the fridge. Now we're going to mix the cinnamon and sugar together. So I've just got some ground cinnamon and some granulated sugar. You want them in a fairly, you know, like a medium to large size bowl because we're gonna toss the hot donuts in here. Uh, and you want, them, you want them to have room to like mix in and get in all those little craggy bits. And now we're going to cut the donuts. So this dough's been in the fridge overnight. Um, I actually think overnight is best. Like, so whenever I make this recipe, I make the dough the night before um, I'm gonna use it and then just let it sit and then cut and fry to order. And I've got a three and a quarter inch cutter. Um, it's important whenever you're cutting, like whether it's a cookie or a donut, you wanna dip the cutter in flour just to make sure that it's not gonna stick. And then what I usually like to do is just go around, give it a little twist, make sure it's not sticking. The dough is still pretty, pretty wet and sticky, so that's why it's important to make sure that you flour after each cut. And then just go around. I usually just go all the way around, make the cuts for the big guys, and then go back and punch out the holes. And then definitely we will save those scraps and then re-roll and punch out those. And then just take a smaller cutter and then just go in and punch out the holes. Do I keep them? Oh my God, Tommy. Yes, they're delicious. Those are actually chef snacks. Like um, when I'm frying these up, like I'll you know fry up the donut holes first to make sure that you know they're good and I'm not gonna feed my guests subpar donuts. So my oil's heated up. I've punched out some holes and some donuts, and now I think it's time to fry. All right. You want a decent amount of oil because otherwise, if you don't have at least three inches of oil in your pot, um, the donuts could sink to the bottom and potentially get burned. So we're just gonna go ahead and carefully drop these in. We're running a little over 360 and that's fine because we're dropping these in and I'll throw in a couple of donut holes just for funsies. Adjust your temp as necessary. But whenever you drop anything cold into hot oil, you're gonna, you're gonna lose some heat. 
They're gonna sink to the bottom and they're gonna come back up and you can see. What's really fun about these donuts is they get this really beautiful craggy edge. Um, so what's happening is as the batter heats up on the inside, all of that moisture starts getting released and the steam will open up cracks on the top um, of each of the donuts. And that's a classic uh, old fashioned style cake donut. If you glaze them, they're gonna hold onto the glaze. In this case, we're gonna dip them in uh, cinnamon sugar. So all the cinnamon sugar is gonna like get into those like little craggy bits and it's gonna be really, really delicious. They're gonna start to puff. Uh, so, you know, the, the dough itself um, is only about three quarters of an inch thick, um, but we're probably running about like an inch and a half now. Um, the, the hole is gonna kind of close up. So they're gonna get this really nice brown color. And that's really what we're looking for. I'll get a couple more ready. And if your dough starts to get a little too soft, you can always throw it back in the refrigerator. All right, these are looking good. You can see how puffy they are now. And see, those are those beautiful craggy bits that I was telling you about. So that's the steam that's like escaping from the donut. It's super hot. Look how beautiful those look. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna drop in the next batch. I love making donuts. Oh. Well, really, I love eating donuts, let's be honest. It's the best thing in the world. And make sure you have um, a thermometer in your oil. Um, this really needs to be around the 350, 360 degree range. Um, and anytime I fry, I have a thermometer. Um, a lot of times uh, I'll actually use a digital thermometer with an alarm, so it just cues me in like when it's dropping too high or too low. And then you just adjust the, uh, the the temp, and don't be alarmed. Like you can see, like this one's opening up on the sides and the bottom. So these uh, these donuts were a little bit wetter. I think uh, there wasn't a lot of flour where they were sitting on the parchment paper, and so they're kind of opening up, and that's totally fine because that's just more area that's going to get sugared. It needs a few more minutes, but I think these donut holes are ready. All right, that guy's done. They're gonna be pretty soft when you pull them out of the oil, but they'll they'll firm up a little bit as they sit. I love that look. This look right here with all these little craggy bits, I think it's just beautiful. Okay, time to sugar the donuts. When I first made these, Brad was actually like, I want you to leave me some plain without sugar. I was like, dude, who eats an unsugared donut? Morocco's the same way. He's like, I don't really like the glaze. I'm like, mm -mm, no. Donuts need to have something on the outside or something on the inside, glaze or cinnamon sugar. Oh, look at that. That is, that is what it needs to look like. It needs to be puffy. It needs to be craggy. It's light. Oh, and fun little donut holes. All right. Like, who wouldn't want that? Like, if, if I walked into somebody's house for brunch and they were making these and that's what they were serving me, I would be so incredibly happy. I don't, I'm like so confused, I just want sugar. Oh, this one is so beautiful to me. I love those craggy bits and it's still warm. Oh yes, look at that, oh my God. It's gonna be so good. Mm. It's so light and so moist. Oh, I just love this, it's really good. I know Ben wants some, I can see him. Mm -hmm. I think the, the holes might actually be the best way to go because it's like, there's more sugar surface area. It's so crispy. It's really crispy. Here, Tommy, have some. I know, thank you. <laughs>